Are you having problems with aphids, mealybug or whitefly in your garden this spring? I know we get this problem from time to time and we want to share with you how we combat it naturally apart from using companion planting in our garden. Hi my name is Kelly and I'm from Morton Bay Organics and welcome to today's video. Before we get into how to make this lovely uh, natural insecticide or pesticide uh, there's a few things I want to talk to you first. Number one we use chili and garlic, so if you're sensitive to any of these ingredients, make sure you wear the appropriate things to avoid irritation. Gloves is the perfect one to start off with, and obviously washing your hands immediately afterwards. Number two, it is a very strong uh, insecticide to use. So uh, please make sure you follow the directions on the mixtures because if you go ahead and use more than what we recommend, you run a very high risk of burning your plants. Number three, the best time to use this spray is in the evening. It is, like most things that we recommend, best to spray in the evening to avoid burning to the plants, but also it allows the plant time to absorb what it can and uh, allow the residue to dry properly to uh, get its best effect. Number four, this can be used for other bugs as well. So chewing bugs like grasshoppers, caterpillars, the 26 dot lady beetle, any of those sort of chewing critters, uh, it is a good preventer for, um, for your plants and the pests from coming in. Uh, so we do recommend it for other things as well, uh, even though we are talking about aphids, mealybugs and whitefly today. Uh, and number five, it is shelf stable for a very long time. So we have some, well quite a lot left over, so I'm only making a small batch today, uh, but we make it usually at the beginning of the year and we get at least 12 months out of it. So please know that you can make bigger batches uh, and uh, you can store it away for at least 12 months. Um, you do go through it pretty quickly if you use it like we do. Uh, we actually use it in our weekly fertilization program for our soil drenches. So it's uh, kind of naturally uh, works without us having to spray direct all the time anyway. But spot problems where you notice these pests, definitely spray it on there. You can use it for up to a week, 10 days at the most before it starts to affect the plant too much. Um, and usually you don't need to use it much longer than that anyway. So let's head to the kitchen and we'll go through ingredients that we need and how to make this lovely spray. So now we're in the kitchen. Uh, all you need are a few ingredients. So we need water. Uh, usually, well for this one, we're using about a liter of water. You can make bigger batches if you like, just double the, um, the amounts of everything. Um, so water, a teaspoon of vegetable oil, a big clove of garlic. This one's a little bit small for our liking, so we've gonna uh, add a few more little bits here. And then we've got some chili. So you can use powdered chili if you like, if you've got no fresh ones available, um, but dried or fresh straight out of the garden, which these ones are, but they're dried. <laughs> they dried on the plant. Um, so what we do first is we add the water to our saucepan. And we get that going. So the whole idea of what we're doing today is to use a boiling method to get the oils and the uh, enzymes out of the plants or the fruits. So chili, you can put in whole if you like, but I like to cut it up so the chili seeds get a really good expose uh, to the boil. So just chop them roughly. They don't need to be fancy or anything. Um, I've used one, two, three, four, five, six, so about seven for this one. So you can smell them as soon as you cut them and they're beautiful, strong flavours. We know that this is hot, it's a cayenne pepper. Um, you can use most peppers but this one's the better one if you've got them. Uh, garlic, just peel the skin off, the rough skin and um, give it a bang on the end, chuck it in, nothing special. It's a bit noisy though, sorry. So 
So if you want to keep it all organic, you can purchase obviously, or grow, if you've grown your own garlic, you can use that, or you can get um, organic garlic from your veggie stores. Same with your chilies. Um, it doesn't have to be organic as in buy organic. Um, it's still natural at the end of the day. Um, so it's no bother. Whatever works and is easiest for you. If you're like me, sometimes you just use what's available. So it's not the end of the world. in the water and a little bit of oil and basically you let it simmer for three hours so we will show you the progress as we go but I'll just take the camera over and that's what you've got at the moment at the beginning so that'll all combine and soften down over time and we'll show you uh, when the time is up what it looks like and the next steps. So we're about an hour in on making our chili and garlic pesticide. So I'm going to show you what we do now. Um, obviously I forgot to mention earlier to leave a lid on the top so you don't let all the water evaporate while it's boiling for such a long time. So make sure you put a lid on. <laughs> um, I'll just turn this around. So <clears throat> As you can see, I've got it on a reasonably high simmer. The aroma is amazing. It's very pungent, so if you're a bit sensitive to those strong smelling things, um, just be prepared for it. But uh, everything's all nice and soft now, so we just give it a little mash to get the last of the oils and nutritional value out of garlic and the chili so it doesn't need to be minced mince but just enough to release the last of everything that's in there we're going to be straining it out at the end anyway see that beautiful color it's got that nice lovely pink hue to it um, yeah so we'll just let it keep simmering for about another hour because uh, this is a smaller amount, um, two hours should be sufficient. But if you do bigger bulk uh, sizes, you definitely need the three hours. So we'll come back and check in at the end. Okay, so we've got to the two hour point on our smaller mixture for those making a bigger mixture after three hours. Um, as you can see, a lot of steam has escaped and we've got a much lower amount here, which is fine. Um, during the uh, simmering phase you can add more water if you want a higher volume but I'm after the concentrate so I was happy to let it evaporate down. Um, so yeah so as you can see it's all mushed up it's got that nice color it smells amazing it's not frying my eyeballs out like it does sometimes but it is certainly um, strong enough the the chili um, uh, the chili smell is great and the garlic smell is very strong and and lovely too so the next step is to strain it so we've got a strainer in a glass bowl you can use whatever um, receptacle or another saucepan um, you can even use a muslin wrap if you want or cheesecloth but this is fine enough <coughs> So you want to strain out as much as you can. It's all cloudy, that's normal. And as you can see, you've got all that beautiful chili seed and garlic there. So I just like to strain out as what I can, so I scrape. Now when you do this part, 
sorry, it gets to your throat. <laughs> it's the chili. So basically, you squish out what you can. If you use a muslin wrap, you can really get uh, the most out of it. Now you've got this beautiful liquid uh, pesticide to use and as you can see there's uh, on the top there's some of the oil that we added in but it's also the oils from the garlic and the chili as well that's sitting on the top. So you can make this without the teaspoon of vegetable oil if you want because it usually has enough oil in it anyway. So we let that cool and then uh, we'll char uh, put it in jars or can it um, and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. So we've um, let everything cool and settle and I'm just showing you one uh, that I made a couple of months ago, probably actually the beginning of the year. Um, as you can see it's a nice beautiful colour. Uh, there's a bit of sediment at the bottom and that's okay that's all the the bits and pieces from the garlic uh, in there so um, if you can this while it's hot um, the seal will stick down and you can keep it for 12 months easy um, if you just pack it cold like we do because we go through it fast enough uh, it'll keep for about three to six months like that now <clears throat> um, Make sure you label it so you don't accidentally drink it or use it for something that you don't want to um, because it's all natural and it's just garlic and chilli. Um, obviously it's not going to hurt anyone other than make you feel like you're on fire <laughs> if you accidentally consume some yourself so it's not dangerous per se. Um, but basically when we use this we make it up into a solution. Uh, this one's nearly finished because we're using it in the greenhouse at the moment. All we do, this is a 500ml bottle. Uh, all I do is put two tablespoons. So, two tablespoons, no more, <laughs> uh, in there um, for 500ml. You should really do two tablespoons for a litre uh, that is ideal um, but I know um, our plants can tolerate it because we've uh, we use it all the time uh, as long as you're using it in the evening so when you do spray it um, I will show you on your plants uh, I'll just go over to this lovely bok choy make sure you spray the top of your plant and then get under so it's important to get the under leaves because that's where these pests hide. And so you can do that. You can do that every day for about seven to 10 days and that will get rid of your pests um, as well as when you're watering to do a bit of a water blast as well. So, um, it, um, so you can wash away any of the dead aphids or mealybugs or white fly. Um, so yeah, so that's the easiest way to do it. Um, and if you choose to as a preventative uh, method, um, whenever you do a normal liquid fertilizer, um, you can chuck some in with uh, the fertilizer. It's not gonna hurt the plants. Um, and because you're doing the fertilizing in the evening as well, um, it just is sort of like a pre preventer. It helps maintain anything, keeps numbers to a minimum. Um, and all plants need the biodiversity in there because if you've got good bugs around they need some food at the end of the day as well so they will help keep the numbers low on top of it um, but this will just help along um, a lot faster so if you liked today's video give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed please hit that subscribe button uh, and the notifications for the new videos that come through um, we really hope you got something out of today's video and we'll see you next time. Bye.